Tene Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Uyantiyat Surayaha Oh, all pervading personality, go ahead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primal cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes he is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. <clears throat> it is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free of the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitravotra Paramo Nirmatsuranam Satam Vidyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Sivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimva Parir Ishwaraha Sadyohidi Avurudyate Tra Kriti bihi susubhistakshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is itself, uh, uh, is itself, uh, let's see, uh, is, is this self sufficient for God realization? What is need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavad by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigamak alpaturur galitam falam sukamukad amrita drive you some your tum. Pibata Bhagavatam rasam alayam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desired tree Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishful for, for all. <laughs> including liberated souls. 
Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Iryang Takstohi Abhadrani Vidunati Srihitsatam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend, and purifies a devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta presu abadresu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati utama sloke bhaktir bhaviti naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo, kamaloba dayas chaye, chaita itara navidam, sitvam satve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service of the Lord, I'm sorry, by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. By development of devotional service, service one. And thus, material loss and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso, Bhagavad bhakti yogataha, Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam Mukta Sangha Sijayate When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hirdaya grantis chidyante sarvasamsaya shiyante chasikarmani jista evat manishwari. Thus, bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the Supreme uh, Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness, one can understand the science of Krishna. Canto 1, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Verse Number 48. Abapur Duravapam Te Forty-seven and forty-eight, sorry. Tadyano Driktaya Bhaktya Visuddha Tisana Pare Tasminarayana Pare Ekanta Mata Yoga Tim Avapu Duravapam Te Asad Vishayat Mabi Viduta kalmasa stanam virajinat manayivati Translation Thus by pure consciousness, through the constant devotional remembrance, 
they attain the spiritual sky, which is ruled over by the supreme Narayana, Lord Krishna. This is attained only by those who meditate upon the one supreme Lord without deviation. This abode of the Lord, of the Lord Sri Krishna, known as Goloka Vrindavana, cannot be attained by persons who are absorbed in the material conception of life. It, but the Pandavas, being completely washed of all material contamination, attained that abode in their very same bodies. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. According to Srila Jiva Goswami, a person freed from the three modes of material qualities, namely goodness, passion, and ignorance, and situated in transcendence, can reach the highest perfection of life without change of body. Sri Sanatan Goswami in his Hari Bhakti Vilasa says that a person, whatever he may be, can attain the perfection of a twice-born Brahmana by undergoing the spiritual disciplinary actions under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master exactly like a chemist, exactly as a chemist can turn gunmetal into gold by chemical manipulation. It is therefore the actual guidance of that matters and in the process of becoming a brahmana even without change of body or in going back to godhead without change of body Srila jiva goswami remarks that the word he used in this connection positively affirms this truth and there is no doubt about the factual position the Bhagavad Gita 1426 also affirms the statement of Srila Jiva Goswami when the Lord says that anyone who executes devotional service systematically without deviation can attain the perfection of Brahman by surpassing the contamination of the three modes of material nature and when the Brahman perfection is still more advanced by the self-same execution of devotional service, there is no doubt at all that one can attain the supreme spiritual planet, Goloka Vrindavana, without change of body, as we have already discussed, in connection with the Lord's returning to his abode without a change of body. Srila Prabhupada Ki So we have become illusioned, dumbed down, stupid, ignorant, foolish, whimsical, irresponsible by modern education that teaches us that there's only this body and nothing else. And when the body dies, that's it. It's done. Everything's over. You're finished. It's zero. It's nada. There's nothing there. And therefore, you're not responsible for anything you did. So this is, this is like crazy nonsense that's being taught in so-called schools. They're not schools. They're slaughterhouses. It slaughters any feelings one has for God. It makes a person lower than an animal. Animal has some control. They're controlled by uh, instinct. But lower than the animal is are human beings who have no control. They'll do anything, any foolish thing, thinking that, look, when I die, it's all over. I'm not going to be held responsible. There's nothing after death. So all these foolish concepts are being taught, and it's creating havoc in society, as we're seeing today. There's, there is a, a degradation of the quality of people today who think it's okay to burn and riot and kill and destroy things and cancel things and, and so forth. So uh, when will we wake up and realize what is happening? Or do we just go with the flow to hell? That's, that's the decision we have to make. Do we want to go with the flow to hell? and continue birth, death, old age, and disease over and over again, 
suffering, being illusioned, being in anxiety, stressed out. How come everybody's stressed out? Well, because they're doing wrong things. That's why. If they were doing the right thing, they wouldn't be stressed out. So we see that right from the beginning of life, there's stress and there's difficulty and there's tragedy. So when will we wake up? That's the question. Wake up from what? Wake up from this bad dream, based, which is based on illusion and ignorance. So here we see that Maharaj Yudhisthira uh, was able to uh, put an end to his material life and become very serious about uh, meditating on Krishna all the time, not letting anything uh, derail his determination to stay focused on the Lord. And in that way, he attained perfection, even in his body. Even in the, because the body becomes spiritualized when one uh, transcends the influence of the modes of material nature and always stays uninterruptedly in devotional service. Mamchayovi bicharina bhakti yogena sevate sagunam samatit yaitan brahmabuyaya kalpate. One who engages in devotional service and never falls down under any circumstance comes to the level of Brahman above the influence of modes of material nature and uh, thus uh, is liberated. And then one goes even higher than that by attaining, attaining neutrality and equality. And then even higher than that by developing pure love of Krishna. So what is the means of attaining to the transcendental position? This was a question that Arjuna asked. And this was answered by Krishna. He said, uh, he gives the examples uh, of the, the symptoms of someone who is transcendentally ex uh, uh, situated. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Prakasam Cha Pavritim Cha Mohan Eva Napandava Nadvesti Samparvitani Na Nibritani Kanksati Vadasina Vadasino Manapa-manayas-tulyas-tulyo-mitradi-pakshayo Sarvaramba Parityaji Gunatita Sauchyate. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, O son of Pandu, he who does not hate illumination, attachment, and delusion when they are present or long for them when they disappear, who is unwavering and undisturbed through all these reactions of the material qualities, remaining neutral and transcendental, knowing that the modes alone are active. Who is situated in the self and regards alike happiness and distress? Who looks upon a lump of earth, a stone, and a piece of gold with an equal eye? Who is equal toward the desirable and the undesirable? Who is steady, situated equally well in praise and blame, honor and dishonor? Who treats alike both friend and enemy? And who has renounced all material activities? Such a person is said to have transcended the modes of nature. So these are the qualities by which you can recognize if someone is still under the throes of nature or have, have transcended them. <clears throat> so this is something desirable. And because of that, jivan mukta sa uchite, one becomes liberated even in this world. And even though one has a material body, it becomes spiritualized by the constant engagement in devotional service, and especially by constant 
contemplation of Krishna and, and remembering his teachings and following his te teachings. So anyone who executes devotional sy service systematically without deviation can attain the perfection of Brahman by surpassing the contamination of three modes of material nature. And when the Brahman perfection is still more advanced by self-same execution of devotional service, there is no doubt at all that one can attain the supreme spiritual planet, Goloka Vrindavana, without change of body, as we have already discussed in connection with the Lord's returning to his abode without a change of body. There it is. And this, this seems like something impossible for the materialist, and it is. But for the devotees, it's very possible. If we believe it, if we follow it, if we practice it, if we uh, are determined not to be deterred in, in, uh, uh, from devotional service by any false arguments or false philosophies or by force, by demons trying to stop us. No one can stop a devotee because even if you're tied up and in jail and in solitary confinement, you can meditate on Krishna and still be liberated. So there's meditation upon Krishna as, as opposed to meditation upon sense gratification should be our goal in life. Everyone else is meditating on sense gratification. Right? They're, they're dreaming about, oh, I was so happy when I was younger. Oh, I wish I had a, a uh, Hava Mahal, a palace in the sky. Well, there's no such thing as Hava Mahal palace in the sky but people are dreaming oh i would i can fly around in my in my paradise or i can be like uh, these movie stars who are going to take the first uh flight to outer space by spacex uh elon musk's spacex rocket it's a rocket airplane they're going to go up 300 miles into space and they're going to pay $120,000 for that ride. So you're paying $1,200 to go to India. They're going to pay $120,000 to go up 300 miles into space. And they think, oh, I went into space. <laughs> it's, it's a joke. The whole thing is a joke. It's all nonsense. But people like nonsense. That's the trouble. They're attracted to nonsense. Prabhupada tells a story of one man who set up a little tent and put up a sign, imitation dog pachas paisa. So there's a big line of people, like 100 people waiting. To get, and then when they go in and they see this, this man inside acting like a dog, roof, roof. And they come out holding their stomach laughing, <laughs> like that, you know. So some other man saw this. He said, this is nonsense, he said. So he set up a little tent exactly like that guy and he put up a sign, real dog, pachas paisa. Not one person went there. They didn't want to see the real thing. They wanted to see the imitation thing, you see. So that, that's exactly what's happening today. People, they hear about the real thing, but they're not interested. They hear some bogus, foolish, crazy nonsense. Oh, they're very interested. I want to learn this. I want to memorize this. I want to meditate on this. See? So this is a misfortune in this age. that People are willingly being misled, willingly lied to, and they accept the lies as truth, and they waste their life doing uh, useless things. So we should take real notice of this, of this verse. And, uh, and it, again, it says that uh, thus by pure consciousness, due to constant devotional remembrance, they, meaning the Pandavas, attain the spiritual sky, which is ruled over by the supreme Narayana, Lord Krishna. So you notice it's saying the supreme Narayana earlier on, uh, Bhisma Pita Maha in uh, chapter 9 he said 
he he explained to Eudistir, he said, look, this guy standing next to you, next to me, you think he's a member of your family, but you're, uh, you're mistaken. He's the supreme personality of Godhead walking among us and bewildering us by his presence into thinking he's like one of us, but he's not. He is the supreme personality of Godhead, the original Narayana. Yes, so he says, Esavai Bhagavan Sakshat Adyo Narayana Puman Mohayan Mayaya Lokan Gudas Charati Vishnisu This Sri Krishna is no other than the inconceivable original personality of Godhead. He is the first Narayana. So here he says, uh, Adyo Narayana. And in this verse, uh, he says, the, uh, he's the supreme Narayana. Uh, so, Tasmin Narayana. He's the supreme Narayana. Okay, so, and then he says, uh, but he is move, moving amongst the descendants of King Vishnu, just like one of us. And he's bewildering us with his self-created energy. So, understanding Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead is a rare thing. Extremely rare. Manushyanam sahasri sukhaschit jadati siddhaye jadatam apisiddhanam kaschit malam viti tatvataha. One person out of hundreds and thousands, millions of people will actually understand who Krishna is. But if you regularly hear Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, you can understand uh, rather quickly who Krishna is. If you're here with faith and you're here regularly, because our problem is it goes in one ear and comes out the other ear. So we have to constantly be letting it come in one ear and going out the other ear, unless you want to plug that other ear with a cotton cloth, you know, to hold it in. So <laughs> this regular hearing is necessary. Just like in elementary school, we learn that 2 plus 2 equals 4. And in our college calculus course and differential uh, equation course and advanced uh, uh, math courses, we also hear 2 plus 2 is 4. But our understanding of two plus two is four in college is more profound than our understanding in elementary school that two plus two is four. So in the same thing, uh, and that means we've gone through before we get to college at least twelve years of school, and then we get into college. And there's another four years of school, and then we get into uh, college again. There's master's degree, another two, three, four years, and then. We get our PhD, that's another four years. So, at least 20 years of education, and by that time we understand two plus two is four, but very profoundly. So, we have to keep hearing this knowledge in Bhagavad Gita over and over again. Eventually, eventually, it will stick in the mind. But just hearing it once, and then going and eating a hot dog is not going not gonna to do anything. It's going to do something, but very little. So uh, this is attained only by those who meditate upon the one Supreme Lord without deviation. This abode of Lord Sri Krishna, known as Goloka Vrindavan, cannot be attained by persons who are absorbed in the material conception of life. We explained the other day what is the material conception. Basically, is thinking that sense gratification is the goal of life. But the Pandavas, being completely washed of all material contamination, attained that abode in their very same bodies. Are there any questions? Yeah. Uh, 
uh, they have, it, it means that these people, you know, the Pandavas, they have an eternal relationship with Krishna. That means they're always with him, whether in the spiritual world or in the material world. So, and their bodies have become spiritual because they use them completely in the service of the Lord. So this is explained by Rupa Goswami. Uh, he says, Iha yasya harir dasi karmana manasajira akilasva pivasta su jivan mukta sa uchyate. So one who engages everything in his life in the service of the Lord and without any deviation, they become completely purified. And being completely purified, they are liberated even in this world. And, and you notice they said that they're completely free of all contamination, right? So this is explained in Bhagavad Gita also uh, in the four in the fifth chapter, where it says the same verse, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu one point two point one eighty seven. A person acting in Krishna consciousness, or in other words, in the service of Krishna, with his body, mind, intelligence, and words, is a liberated person even within the material world, although he may be engaged in many so-called material activities. He has no false ego, for he does not believe that he is this material body, or that he possesses the body. He knows that he is not the, this body, and that this body does not belong to him. He himself belongs to Krishna, and the body too belongs to Krishna. When he applies everything produced of the body, mind, intelligence, words, life, wealth, etc., whatever he may have within his possession, to Krishna's service, he is at once dovetailed with Krishna, he is one with Krishna, and he is devoid of the false ego that leads one to behave that he is in the body, etc. This is the perfect stage of Krishna consciousness. This is the uh, Bhagavad Gita 5.11. Kayana manasa buddhya kevalar indraya rapi yoginat karma kurvanti sangam tyak bhatma sudaye. The yogis abandoning attachment act with body, mind, intelligence, and even with the senses only for the purpose of purification. So we notice it says, but the Pandavas, being completely washed of all material contamination, attained that abode in their very same bodies. So we, the way you get completely washed of all contamination is to completely engage in devotional service and not be deviated from it, even for a second. Then you become completely washed. Okay? Haribo. And it's in the Bhagavad Gita also. Any other questions? He's not talking about Brahman effulgence. Yeah. yeah. Self same means meaning the same devotional service. So more advanced means you attain equality and neutrality. That means you realize you're part and parcel of Krishna. That means equality. You're not equal to him, but you have the same qualities, right? But in minute quantity. And neutrality, you're not disturbed by anything. Now, this is explained in Srimad Bhagavatam. We've already read it. I'll, sh I'll, I'll just show you where it is in a second. It's a very important point because this position of equality and neutrality are transcendental to uh, uh, to simply Brahman realization. It's a more advanced stage. And one second. No, you, devotional service means waking up early, bathing, coming to Mangalarti, chanting your rounds, Tulsi Arti, Guru Puja, you know, Prashadam, Sankirtan, service, 
deity worship, that, that, that's the same, self-same means the same devotional service that you were doing. Just like if, if, if let's say there's a singer uh, sewing machine, right? And all of a sudden, the singer sewing machine goes back to Godhead. Would it continue sewing in the, in, in back to Godhead, or would, would it start playing baseball or something? No, it would continue. It would continue doing the same thing, sewing for the deities. You see my point? So it's self-same means it's the same devotional service that you're doing here, or you're doing in the spiritual world. But when it's completely pure, it's transcendental. Brahman means he becomes free of sochati and kanksati, becomes free of the influence of the modes of material nature, of lamentation and hankering. And then there is a stage of equality and neutrality. Let's see, one second, where is that? Well, okay, so Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Na Sochati Na Kanksati Samak Sarve Subhutesu. That is called uh, equally uh, acting equally with all living entities. Now, why? Because you see the presence of Krishna uh, in the uh, in the body. Okay, so Srimad Bhagavatam 159. Oh, 1.5.9. Okay, Srimad Bhagavatam 1.5.9. Let's see what it says there. One point five point nine. Okay. So it says, yeah, it says after liberation, which is the last item in the line of performing religiosity, etc. One is engaged in pure devotional service. This is called the stage of self-realization or the Brahma Buddha stage. After attainment of this Brahma Buddha stage, one is satisfied. But satisfaction is the beginning of transcendental bliss. One should progress by attaining neutrality and equality in the relative world. And passing this stage of equanimity, one is fixed in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. This is the instruction of the person I got it in the Bhagavad Gita. The conclusion is that in order to maintain the status quo of the Brahma Bhutta stage, as also to increase the degree of transcendental realization, Narada recommended to Vyasa, that he, Vyasa, should now eagerly and repeatedly describe the path of devotional service. This would cure him from gross despondency. So, Brahma Bhutta Prasanatma. So, this Brahma Bhutta stage, liberated stage, you become Prasanatma, satisfied. But you have to go beyond that. It says, but satisfaction is the beginning of transcendental bliss. One should progress by attaining neutrality and equality in the relative world. So neutrality means you're not disturbed by anything that happens, happiness or distress. By, you're not disturbed by any of the dualities, right? Uh, cold and heat, uh, riches and poverty, fame and infamy, happiness and distress, love and hate. You're not disturbed by it. You, you remain steady in your devotional service. And then, uh, Equality, it means that you see the presence of Krishna in the heart of every living entity. And therefore, when you see the deity in the temple, you bow down and you give respect to the deity. So when you see any living entity, that living entity, entity's body is a temple of the Lord because the Lord is inside. So you give respect to all living entities. That's called uh, equ uh, equality. You don't say, oh, this, this guy is a, this color, so that's the, the, those are low-class people. And, and this one, uh, no, they don't speak English, so that means they're low-class. You know, you don't see like that. You say, oh, this, is a, this person is a temple of, of Krishna, the same Krishna I'm worshiping on the altar in the temple. 
that same Krishna is in the heart of this person. So this person is a walking temple. So that's a more advanced stage than prasanatma, simply being self-satisfied. And then from that, from that position, you engage in pure devotional service and you attain love of God. But you have to go beyond prasanatma. You have to, you have to go to the neutrality and equality. Okay, so that's first canto, fifth chapter, ninth verse. And also, you'll see fifth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, 18th verse, 518, which says, The humble stage, you know, vidya vinaya sampane brahmani gavihastini sunichaiva swapa kecha panditas samadarshana. The humble sages, by virtue of true knowledge, see with equal vision a learned and gentle brahmana, a cow, an elephant, a dog, and a dog eater or outcast. And Prabhupada says, a Krishna conscious person does not make any distinction, distinction between species or castes. The brahmana and the outcast may be different from the social point of view, or a dog, a cow, and an elephant may be different from the point of view of species, but these differences of body are meaningless from the viewpoint of a learned transcendentalist. This is due to their relationship to the Supreme, for the Supreme Lord, by his plenary portion as Paramatma, is present in everyone's heart. Such an understanding of the Supreme is real knowledge. As far as the bodies are concerned, and different castes or different species of life, the Lord is equally kind to everyone because he treats every living being as a friend, yet maintains himself as Paramatma, regardless of the circumstances of the living entities. The Lord as Paramatma is present both in the outcast and in the Brahmana, although the body of a Brahmana and that of an outcast are not the same. The bodies are material productions of different modes of material nature. But the soul and the super soul within the body are of the same spiritual quality. The similarity in the quality of the soul and the super soul, however, does not make them equal in quantity, for the individual soul is present only in that particular body, whereas the Paramatma is present in each and every body. A Krishna conscious person has full knowledge of this, and therefore he is truly learned and has equal vision. That's, that means that uh, samadarshi, equal vision. Right? The similar characteristics of the soul and super soul are that they are both conscious, eternal, and blissful. But the difference is that the individual soul is conscious within the limited jurisdiction of the body, whereas the super soul is conscious of all bodies. The, supreme, the super soul is present in all bodies without distinction. Okay. Srila Prabhupada ki Any other questions, comments?